Yesterday, I spoke with uh, both Senator Schumer and Manchin and offered my support for a historic agreement to fight inflation and lower costs for American families. <clears throat> it will be — and uh, it will be the most important investment — not hyperbole — the most important investment we've ever made in our energy security. Most recently, the U.S. Senate is moving forward with a sweeping new bill after Senator Joe Manchin finally agreed to include investments to curb climate change. The new bill is going to include the long-awaited electric vehicle tax credit reform. The good news is that if this new bill is approved, the Tesla Semi will receive a great incentive of up to tens of thousands of dollars. But what else does this bill entail? Let's find out together in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started on today's content. After the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 was announced in the U.S. Senate this week, the EV community was understandably focused on the federal EV tax credit reform, which is going to give back access to the incentive for Tesla and GM electric vehicle buyers. There is a section for commercial clean vehicles that is expected to apply to electric trucks. It offers up to $40,000 in incentives for commercial clean vehicles of more than 14,000 pounds. Currently, Tesla gives the expected base price of the Tesla Semi starting at $150,000 with a 300-mile range. At that price point, the EV already has a better cost of operation per mile than diesel trucks, which dominate the trucking industry today. A $40,000 incentive would bring the price down to only $110,000, and it would make the cost per mile even more competitive which is going to be the federal level if the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 is adopted. This new bill likely aims primarily toward encouraging the sales of electric trucks like the Tesla Semi. Daimler's Freightliner Cascadia and even fuel cell hydrogen electric trucks like Nikola Motors vehicles. Last year, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the $1.9 trillion Build Back Better legislation, but has been stuck in the divided Senate ever since. Moreover, at that time, President Joe Biden proposed boosting EV tax credits to up to $12,500 per vehicle, including $4,500 for union-made vehicles, and eventually making the credits apply only to U.S.-made vehicles. Joe Manchin, a Democrat and senior United States Senator from West Virginia, has been holding his vote, which is the deciding vote since the Democrats need every single one of their votes in the Senate to pass anything. But recently, he announced that he accepted a new version of the bill now called the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. The new bill is interesting to the EV community because it includes a long-needed reform to the federal tax credit for electric vehicles. The main goal of the reform, and the one most people agree on, is the need to eliminate the previous tax credit cap after automakers hit 200,000 EVs sold, since it is putting electric automakers such as Tesla at a disadvantage. Tesla, the industry leader in electric vehicles, reached sales of 200,000 qualifying vehicles in December of 2019. However, the bill is not yet law, and it still faces resistance from politicians from the Republican Party. Accordingly, several sources unveiled that Texas Senator Ted Cruz has spoken out against the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 because he is concerned that once this bill is passed and electric cars will receive huge incentives, that it will affect the gasoline car industry. And at that time, oil companies will also be affected by the decrease in demand for fossil fuel-powered cars. Previously, Ted Cruz had received large sums of money from fossil fuel companies, so he's worried that his interests would be compromised. Despite the objection from some politicians, experts believe that the new bill should be able to move through the legislative process after over a year of negotiation. In addition to new incentives at the federal level, there are also several incentives for commercial electric trucks in place at the state level in the U.S., in places like California, for example. The California Air Resources Board offers point-of-sale rebates of up to $750 for the purchase or lease of a new electric or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle through the Clean Fuel Reward Program. 
Eligible EVs must have a minimum battery capacity of 5 kilowatt hours and be purchased from participating retailers. The South Coast Air Quality Management District, or SCAQMD, offers grants for the replacement or repower of eligible Class 7 and 8 heavy duty vehicles with low nitrogen oxide vehicles. The grants may cover up to half of non government project costs and up to a full 100% of government project costs, up to $3 million per entity. Eligible vehicles include Class 7 and 8 freight trucks drayage trucks, dump trucks, waste haulers, and concrete mixers, and freight switcher locomotives. Grants are awarded on a first-come, first-served basis. The program is funded by California's portion of the Volkswagen Environmental Mitigation Trust. However, all of these incentives just mainly drive demand for the Tesla Semi. Currently, the main issue for electric trucks is ramping up production and of the batteries needed to build them as each class of electric truck would need 5 to 10 times more battery cells than the average electric car. For instance, each Tesla Model Y has 828 battery cells with 4 modules, hence each Tesla Semi will need over 4,000 battery cells. Assuming that Tesla will have to manufacture 10,000 Tesla Semis in the future, it will need to produce over 40 million 4680 battery cells to meet the demand for production. But Tesla has a way of solving the problem of producing batteries in such large quantities. Accordingly, Tesla can produce a massive number of 4680 cells due to advanced technologies. The electric automaker has been applying automation technology in the production of 4680 batteries. In a battery assembly line, a robot can grab and press in all battery cells at once, probably using resin for bonding to the honeycomb. Then, they'll automatically make the circuit connections. The same machine can potentially do this for any pack size by grabbing a different number of rows or columns of cells. On top of that, Drew Buglino, Tesla's senior vice president, powertrain and energy engineering, shared the vertical integration with the machine design teams at Giga Texas allows us to really accomplish high battery production capacity because we don't have any of these edge conditions between one piece of equipment and another. Tesla's relentless pursuit of vertical integration comes from a desire to eliminate inefficiencies and improve the sustainability of the product. Tesla's vertical integration is also a much needed improvement in increasing battery production speed. If the new bill is passed, it will not only help Tesla Semi receive a great incentive, but it'll also help the US accelerate the electrification process of trucks. And with that, today's episode has come to an end. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel, Tesla Car World. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs. And be sure to leave a comment down below to tell us what you thought about today's content. Once again, we thank you so much from all of us here. We hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.